Welcome to my talk about uh, connecting GraphQL with your own uh, React uh, project. Um, my name is indeed Jesse Reitsma. I uh, own a little company from the Netherlands uh, called Yerio. I'm an extension provider. Uh, what I also do is actually uh, train Magenta 2 developers. Um, but on top of that, actually, I organize a couple of other things, including uh, Mage Test Fest um, and Reacticon. And I've, I've been promoting a couple of things already a couple of times. And actually, Max Bronco tweeted about this just a, an hour ago. Whenever I grab the microphone and I start, I start to ask questions, then actually I, I start to do the self-promoting thing. <laughs> but actually, this is now my talk, so I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> so uh, Reacticon version 2 um, in a couple of months' time on uh, October. However, I also wanted to actually point out that there's uh, another thing that I'm also doing. Um, I'm a member of XDN. Uh, extension Developer Network, uh, and it's a voluntary thing, open source. Uh, it's, it's part of the community, and what we're trying to do is actually, as extension developers, we're trying to increase the level of quality of extensions overall, which is, well, kind of challenging if you, if you see, like, the amount of extensions out there and, and so many different people creating those extensions. Um, I, I brought with me a couple of flyers that might be interesting for extension development as well. Um, and, and some, some stickers, and, and some even some Re Reacticon stickers, um, and that's promotion off. Um, what I also want to point out, a little disclaimer, I'm, I'm actually not really good at Photoshop, which has a, an additional ring, of course, like after a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually not, not really good at it. So um, what this talk is about is uh, connecting GraphQL with uh, React. Um, but there's a, co a couple of pointers that I want to make later on. Um, uh, but first of all, maybe GraphQL, who, who has already played with it? A show of hands. That's just, just a few of you. Um, how many of you are familiar with REST? And that's actually a lot more hands. Well, the, the funny thing about REST is actually that we've been using it already for maybe 10 years or so. Um, but, but REST is dead. So rest in peace. Um, and, and GraphQL is just a lot better. And why? Well, there, there's numerous features out there. Uh, for instance, there's this thing called the predictive API, meaning actually that once you start typing, uh, the, the GraphQL API will auto automatically complete whatever is there in the GraphQL API itself. So it, it's helping you actually. It's like a self-documenting system helping you to, to use the API. Uh, and another main feature is actually with REST, you would need multiple calls to the server to actually fetch data, while with GraphQL it could be all combined in, into a single request, making it potentially more performant than uh, REST. Now, I'm, I'm not further going to dive into uh, GraphQL. However, my talk is actually about using GraphQL. So I'm, I'm leading up to the point of, of basically making it um, more accessible towards developers that are just starting with GraphQL to begin with, uh, with a couple of examples to get you going um, more technical. Um, however, the, the problem is actually that we're slowly moving into new kind of development. Uh, so PWA has been on the agenda um, uh, for the whole day almost. Like it's, it's, it's kind of typical that the dev track of um, uh, Meet Magenta UK is, is about 90% uh, PWA oriented. Uh, so we're slowly moving into something, something else. Uh, and one of the questions would be like, well, what is this new world going to be uh, like? It, it, what kind of development do we need? What kind of choices do we need on a business level? Uh, and that's, that's kind of hard to predict. Um, what we do know is that, that we had before this, this monolithic system of Magento itself. Um, and if you're uh, developing with Magento currently, uh, and you're playing around with this complex system of XML layout, block classes, PHTML, and then on top of that, there's this re required JS and knockout in UI components. Well, already explaining it uh, makes you get lost actually in that whole architecture. So this is actually what we, we call the monolithic approach. Um, and instead of actually uh, dealing with that part of history, um, with PWA, we're actually moving forward and we're trying to improve it uh, in a better way. Now, um, one of the ways of improving it is uh, the, the headless approach. Um, now, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you've uh, seen the, the guys of the dev track and, and actually watched their shirt, but all of the shirts are there actually on, on some kind of performance or some reason. So Rowan gave a shirt earlier and there's this, this shirt of his Rowan University. Um, and actually, I, I don't know, like, close the gap, what close, but here I am, a drunk developer. <laughs> um, 
And the funny thing about drug developers is, is often when we refer to Magento, we, we start talking about Magento, Magento, Magneto, and then, then actually this superhero <laughs> pops up. Um, but, but if you look more closely, this, this guy could be representing actually the current state of Magento. So actually, um, you, you could look at this guy and say like, hey, but who, who is this evil guy with this, with this frown on his face? Um, and, and he's trying to enforce this monolithic system on, to, on, on, on us, like, like leading the charge or something. Um, but actually, what we could do is just take off his head, um, headless. Uh, or really like the queen would say, off with his head. <laughs> so um, basically that's leading to, well, something like this. I, I told you I'm not really good at Photoshop, so I'm just taking <laughs> off the head. Uh, but now the uh, invitation is actually to replace this with something better, something newer. Um, well, <laughs> definitely not that. <laughs> so um, wrong, wrong mistake there. Um, what, what I also wanted to show actually was, um, funnily, I, I started to dive into these um, action figures uh, and Magneto was one of them. And actually, I, I bumped into this, this lady. Uh, does anybody know who, who this is? Knockout. So actually, um, when we deal with <laughs> Magento 2 front-end technology, so uh, Knockout JS, Require JS, so it, it would also leave uh, this open actually to, um, well, take off her head and actually only remain like the, the good parts. <laughs> but that's that's... That's like really, really inappropriate, actually. So uh, f forget about that li the little joke. So um, now, more serious. So th the talk is actually about Knockout JS. No, sorry, not Knockout, Knockout JS, but it's it's about GraphQL, um, and it's it's kind of an open invitation to all of you uh, developers out there to, to basically start with GraphQL. Um, but then we first need to take into account the current state of Magento itself. So currently, we're either using Magento 2.1 or 2.2. Um, 2.3 is on the rise. Um, it might be Q3 2018. Um, Q3, that, that's actually in 16 days from now. Um, so I, I doubt it that, that it's going to take only 16 days to complete Magento 2.3. Uh, but the cool thing is, one, once it's there, in a couple of months' time, there's going to be a couple of features in there, GraphQL support, um, PWA Studio, and then if you, uh, if you try to combine these, PWA Studio is allowing you to build a PWA uh, based upon React. Um, and that's also actually the tooling that I'm going to play with in a, in a couple of uh, slides later on. Um, but GraphQL and PWA Studio, they, they are combined, they are introduced in 2.3, however, with a minor shortcoming. And that is, um, there's no support for the checkout and card yet. So then if you start to think about a full migration from Magento 2, 2.2, the current version, into 2.3. Actually, you can't because there's, there's still a lot of things actually lacking. The whole checkout, the whole e-commerce functionality is not there yet. What is there is the catalog. Um, now, I've, I've explained this, this story to a couple of developers, and then their first reaction is like, well, then I don't need to do anything anymore. I, I can just wait for two years to come. But in two years' time, it will be ready. Um, and in two years' time, hopefully, we have Magento 2.4 or maybe 2.5 or maybe 2.6. But along the way, it will become more stable. So sooner or later, we need to start playing with this new technology. And that's actually my, my whole presentation about um, how to actually play with this technology. Now, hybrid solutions is a term that I came up with, um, meaning that you have this um, Magento 2.3 solution up there with GraphQL. Uh, but then on the other hand, you want to start playing with PWA. Um, however, PWA Studio is also not ready yet. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't start playing with it. Uh, it simply means that, that you need to dive into a couple of scenarios that on the long run maybe help you migrate to PWA Studio. Um, so what you could do, starting from Magento 2.3, once GraphQL is in there and it's kind of stable, then you could uh, use PWA Studio to display the catalog from Magento itself using GraphQL. However, once you proceed actually to the checkout, there's no GraphQL uh, support for the checkout yet, so let's just go back to the normal shop. Uh, another solution would be uh, just to create a couple of React satellite sites for like uh, a promotional campaign or something or a single product website, um, just to, to, to advertise certain content uh, in a really fast way with all of the PWA benefits, and then actually along the way switch to uh, the, the original Magento 2 shops. 
Um, or, and this is also an interesting scenario that, um, uh, that I've actually heard of uh, from within the Netherlands, there's this bigger merchant uh, that, that tried to get actually um, the, the layered navigation within Magento 2 optimized in a certain way, and they got so much stuck actually within the UI component mechanism that they decided to take uh, the whole thing out of Magento and replace it with a really large um, React component. Or, just like me, you simply start with playing with stuff. And that's basically where I'm leading you guys. So, hybrid solutions um, allows you actually to already get started before actually the whole thing is, is complete, before the whole thing is stable. Um, so you could already get started basically with a Magenta 2.3 setup. Um, how to? Well, what you could do is clone the GitHub re resources, um, uh, specifically the 2.3 development branch, uh, check it out, uh, run Composer install, and then you actually have all of the files available. Uh, well, of course, take note, 2.3 is in development, so it might be a little bit buggy. But I've been uh, using this actually to play around with GraphQL, and I didn't bump into any issues yet. Um, next, you can install Magenta 2.3. Uh, you can add the sample data, which is a little bit of a different procedure, so there's not a bin Magento command. You actually need to follow the documentation of the dev docs to get you going there. Um, and then I also bumped into the issue that once we actually have this Magento 2.3 site up and running, normally we always say, like, if we're developing, we're going to use the developer mode. And one of the benefits of the developer mode is that all of the exceptions are on screen. However, with PWA, uh, we actually, in between our screen and uh, Magenta 2.3, we have React running, so that we, we actually need to do a lot of troubleshooting to actually see all of those exceptions. Well, I, I choose deliberately actually to run in the production mode, so that all of the exceptions are logged. So you only need to, to keep an eye on the log files. Um, last but not least, well, then I have a Magento site up and running. Um, I also added HTTPS uh, in there because I'm just a little bit masochistic with creating my own self-signed certificates and whatever. Uh, but there's, there's, there's a running site based upon Magento 2.3. Um, at this moment, I basically started developing my own stuff in React, made a connection to GraphQL, and I'm go going to explain you how. However, I bumped into a small issue, and that issue is actually that my Magento 2.3 site is located on one domain, while actually my React development environment is going to run on localhost port 3000, a different domain. And then the browser is going to object because all of the JavaScript running in Magento is not just allowed uh, to be there run on a localhost setting. Um, put differently, the browser uses this course um, security uh, principle, but to fix that, you can just add the, the following lines to the .htaccess file. But once I started playing with it, I thought like, well, what the heck, I can create a module for it as well. So this, this module is included as a link in the slides and, and uh, the slides will be shared with you guys uh, later on. Um, but it, it's a really simple module, basically doing the same thing as these four lines of code, but now in a ready-made module. And then I was actually ready to play with GraphQL. Uh, so what is GraphQL? GraphQL is uh, this. It's a kind of JSON. Um, it's a description of a query that you're going to send to the server. Uh, this query is in a format called GQL, GraphQL query language, or, well, whatever. Um, and it's, it's formatting, basically, in, in this case, a product search. So I'm going to search specifically for the filter name. So I'm going to search for all of the products that have a name with hoodie, or, sorry, hood in them. Um, and then once I found these, uh, find these items, I'm going to return per, per product, per uh, item to be, to be returned. I'm going to show actually the ID, SQ, and name. Um, and this is a basic query. You, you, you can play around with it. But I, I simply use this as a proof of concept. Well, um, GraphQL is wor working. I'm, I'm being returned with this sample data setup. I'm being returned about 10 to 15 products, which is fine to play with. Um, so I started to go ahead. Now, this query needs to be sent to the server using some kind of GraphQL client. And then you have a lot of different options. Uh, the shell, GraphIQL client, uh, or you could move on to React. And then Re in React, there's numerous other cases, Axios, Apollo, Vulkan. And I've, I've simply also summed up like, the stuff that I played with. Um, and I'm, I'm going to deal with the shell command, GraphIQL, Axios, 
but then most likely I'm running out of time, so I, I skipped the whole setup of both Apollo and Vulcan, but it's just adding up in functionality. So the Apollo uh, approach is like the most complete uh, approach that you could have in, um, in React itself. Um, and, and funnily enough, or that's actually most likely not a coincidence, with PWA St Studio, so the official Magento PWA Studio, uh, the choice is also for React, Apollo, because of GraphQL. Um, so remember the, the, little, the little command that I, so the, the little query that I had earlier on? Um, I can put that in a shell test using curl or using some kind of uh, a client, um, send it to the server, and it sh should work out fine. Um, likewise, graph IQL um, is this visible uh, thing that you can run through the browser or your own <laughs> electron setup or an app image. And an app image is kind of like a virtual machine but totally different. Um, I use the leather and it, and it looks more or less like this. So I'm pointing this client to the uh, Magenta 2 setup that I just uh, installed with Magenta 2.3. On the left hand side I have the query, on the right hand side I get a result. And the result is simply like all of the products that have the name hoodie more or less in them. Um, you can play around with this, and this is like the proof of concept that at least there's any kind of GraphQL client able to communicate with Magento and get uh, a response back from it. However, from this, I started to add React to the mix because that's the, the final goal, to get familiarized actually with a new kind of front end that, that all of the PWA solutions will bring in. Um, so adding React to it might be done using this uh, default scenario to get quickly started with uh, any kind of React project, create React app with a certain name, create a directory, and you go into it, and that's uh, npm start, which leaves you with a screen like this. Well, not, not entirely like this. I modified it already, but it's a blank screen. It's a dummy output. Um, and then on top of it, um, I started to add stuff to it to actually communicate from within this React environment to GraphQL. And as a proof of concept, I used Axios. I simply use really, really ugly code to get going with Axios. Um, it starts basically with, with four lines that are always equal in, in most of the, the React projects, but then the fifth line is actually importing Axios um, so you can instantiate Axios into an Axios client, um, and this Axios, Axios client is going to be the GraphQL client, is pointing towards the Magento 2.3 URL. Um, then I add in my query, and then I simply post the query to the, 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 the GraphQL backend of Magento 2.3, and I log the console, uh, I log the, the response to the console. And the, the weirder part, but that's like, well, the thing how it works, is actually that the result that you get contains data, contains data, contains products, and actually those products contain items. <laughs> so you need to travel inward a little bit, but in the end you get the data, and that's actually what the thing is about. However, this is a proof of concept. Actually, now Axios is added to uh, a React environment, but it's actually outside of the scope of app because the last line is actually the thing that actually builds a React app, a PWA. Um, what you can see there in React DOM.render is an app component, and this app component is going to be the, the base point of a tree-like structure of all of these other components underneath. Um, and instead of actually using this dummy code, you're actually encouraged to actually add a new component, adding in GraphQL uh, logic, and then place this new component underneath app in a certain way. So that, that would look like uh, the following slide, except for it didn't work. Um, I bumped into a little issue, um, and I'm, I'm still not sure if it's actually a Magento 2.3 issue or me or whatever, but um, earlier the Graph IQL client so this graphical desktop kind of thing, or just the command line just worked. However, once you start working with um, uh, Ajax, or with Axios in this case, um, what Axios is going to do, it's going to contact the, the Magento server, but instead of just fetching all of the data using a post or a get, um, just right before, it's going to send an HTTP header called uh, options. And through options, it's going to find out actually whether um, the server is supporting this cross-domain related security or a couple of other things, possibly caching. Um, well, I, I, this, this got me stuck, so I just hacked these, these four lines in there in index.php, and then I thought, like, okay, hey, but I got this module there, so let's add the same functionality to the module. So, so far, the module is simple, but it's actually doing two vital things, and I, I couldn't actually get the whole thing going uh, without the module. 
moving on, then I actually had something working, except for it was a proof of concept. So I, I got my uh, GraphQL request through Axios um, uh, into the GraphQL API of Magento itself. I got a response. But now, actually, the best thing to do is not build dummy code, but actually build a React app, uh, which is based on this app component. And underneath, I could add this other product list component. Uh, and again, this is a proof of concept. Um, I was just playing along with it. While actually, if you dive into React development itself, uh, then they tell you that app should actually have this product list container, which contains all of the logic to, well, the, all of the functionality. While actually, product list itself um, is, a, is a presentational component. The only thing that it should do is actually output something, generate the HTML. While product list itself could contain products, so each product could also be a component, and then each uh, product could have a product link and product media, which could also be components, well, and so on. But that's, that's not related to the story of Magento or related to the story of GraphQL. It's just the design of your own React component. So what I did was simply settle for the first one, a simple product list component, which looks more or less uh, like the following. It's a JavaScript class even though uh, JavaScript doesn't support classes, which is always like mind-boggling. Um, but the main thing is um, this component extends upon a React component. It has a state, and it has a render feature. However, once we start rendering uh, this list of products, um, we, we would wait actually for all of the products to be, to be fetched, but that's not what we want to do. We want this component to be rendered right away, and then after actually rendering maybe with dummy content, I'm going to reload it again, through this component did mount method. So in component did mount, I just add in basically all of the, the proof of concept code that I had earlier with Axios, just the, the, the proof of concept, and I just uh, get the thing going through component did mount um, and so on. However, this is again a proof of concept. So it's allowing me to see that, hey, I can build a component and add this component to a React environment, and this component is then shipped with um, GraphQL logic. It's going to first load with dummy content, then it's going to reload, and then actually with all of the GraphQL products that are fetched from Magento 2.3. However, once you start to create multiple of these components, then you would actually duplicate this line of the instantiation of the Axios client, and that's actually where the whole thing becomes ugly. Um, then you could refactor this into a more ideal scenario, but actually what you're then trying to do is basically refactor this usage of Axios. Oh, sorry, th this is actually the, the output still that you can expect, but, well, it's a list of components or it's a list of, list of products. But actually what you're trying to do then with um, refactoring this, um, this, uh, this Axios setup is kind of complex. Um, it, it also leads to other questions like, well, do you want to separate this logic from this presentational component, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, on the long run, what you're trying to do is duplicate Apollo, <laughs> which you shouldn't do. So instead of duplicating Apollo, just use Apollo. It's a simply better solution. Um, however, th this is actually where my, my slides actually stop because I started to actually um, put everything that I had in my slides in, or, or everything in my, my own default setup with Apollo, I started to duplicate it in my slides. Um, however, instead I just say like, well, what I did was follow the procedure of the Apollo docs. Uh, the documentation is pretty good and, and somewhere in between, there's this reference like, well, fill in the gaps, enter here your, your GraphQL endpoint, uh, meaning that that's actually where the, point, the point where you add in your own Magento 2.3 uh, URL. So it, it's, it's straightforward, and the, the cool thing is actually once you've, you've proven to yourself that Axios is working, then also Apollo is actually working. And I earlier mentioned Vulkan as well, which is this ready-made distribution with even more uh, things. Well, if you choose Vulkan, again, choose to, to follow the, their, their documentation, because somewhere there's, there's this line, this mentioning of a GraphQL endpoint, it, uh, replace that endpoint with Magento 2.3, and it works. The main thing that I wanted to show you is that by, by, by following a couple of steps um, in Magento 2.3 itself, and then using any kind of client, uh, you're able to generate a GraphQL um, query, and then actually send it to, um, to um, uh, Magento 2.3. Uh, maybe just to comment a little bit, um, Apollo client itself um, or Apollo itself uh, assumes actually the setup where you start with this Apollo client. Apollo client is being pushed into this other component called Apollo provider. Apollo provider is wrapping the app component. And basically because of this little trick on line two, all of the other components that descend from app, 
basically everything in your React environment, is actually also inheriting functionality, some kind of dark magic from Apollo provider. So product list is actually inheriting from this Apollo provider as well. But once you start to add a query, you do so through a query component, which is again part of Apollo. So this is kind of the, the procedure playing around with actually your own component and then the components provided by Apollo itself. But again, like once you, you f simply follow the, the documentation, uh, you can get going with the thing pretty quickly. Um, in short, um, Magento 2.3 is to me stable enough actually to start playing at least with GraphQL. And I, I just outlined the steps to actually get going with GraphQL within Magento 2.3 by using the Magento 2.3 development version, which is good enough to actually get this output from GraphQL and do stuff with it. Um, but but I, I also promised you that, that I was not really good at Photoshop. So my invitation is basically that, that I would like to invite you guys to, to really start playing with Magento 2.3 but also specifically actually start playing with um, GraphQL. So like gra load, write GraphQL like a boss. Um, so I invited Max to be in here so just to see like my, my perfect Photoshop work. <laughs> and if you realize now actually who's the guy actually of the body, then you really realize how bad the joke actually is. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, basically Magenta 2.3 is going to be here pretty soon. Uh, it's maybe in a couple of weeks, it's maybe in a couple of months, but, but this Magenta 2.3 development version is already out there. Uh, so there's this invitation basically to start playing with GraphQL. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, I, I also had this bonus video. Um, if if uh, the AV guys could click on the video then you can see actually what we could do with Knockout, but it's actually requiring internet access, so I'm not sure if it's going to load. I, I can't see the guys. No? No, forget about it, but the, the slides are going to be online um, pretty soon, and then you actually can see the, the live video, which I found really funny. Um, <laughs> sneak preview, it's, it's cats, and everybody loves cats. And don't hurt me when you see me again at another conference. Um, any questions? Except for James. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, well, I guess, you know, first of all, I guess I should take the opportunity to talk about uh, our product, uh, PWA, oh, yeah, sure. Build Pack. <laughs> um, you know, apropos of nothing. You want to come, come on stage? Earlier, or? yeah. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> we just released uh, bug fixes that uh, a lot of the problems people are experiencing should be resolved. And Build Pack does one particular thing that you mentioned earlier that you're a masochist and you um, set up your SSL certificates by yourself. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. you're going to have to find something else to hurt yourself with because. <laughs> PWA Build Pack does do that, yeah. um, and the way that it resolves the sort of cores issue is by um, using the development server for Webpack as the website that you actually interact with, and then proxying back to the Magento store. Well, so, well, one of the questions I had there yeah. is actually whether um, the, the Webpack configuration of, of PWA Studio mm -hmm. is tightly connected to the rest of the procedure of PWA Studio, or whether I'm just able to use the, the whole web server and self-signed certificate stuff in my own React environment, it, because that's basically the, the playing part. I don't want to yeah. wait for PWA Studio to be ready in a certain state. Build pack I'm, is ready now. Okay. Yeah, okay. But that's not the question. <laughs> but that's not the question. Really, it's not. Um, I, I There's guess, still a question coming. Well, right? no, it, there is. I, okay. I wanted to ask, uh, if you're building a large system in React, I mean, the, the, the best practice is to try and uh, dissociate and encapsulate the presentational components that receive props from the components that have fancy things hanging off them that know how to ask the internet for stuff. Your, your component did mount method um, shows a that's, a, that's a smart component, it knows to call the internet. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, if you're building a whole store, how do you envision uh, just yourself just maintaining all of the, uh, the logic that does the queries and then all of the view logic in a way that scales? Just yeah, so, so w one of the, the ongoing discussions that we had was basically if you, if you start off with um, a, a React component, one of my wishes is that the React component will work with uh, PWA Studio right. uh, and, and all of the other solutions, front commerce, DET as well. Um, 
but that also includes actually this whole question. So as a React developer, I wouldn't want to worry actually about the whole. Uh, <laughs> so um, the, the, the dummy example that I had is really a dummy example because component did mount, lazy loading specifically for one component. Uh, would also lead actually to other solutions that if I have multiple components, each one would send their own GraphQL query. However, what I just mentioned earlier as a description of GraphQL, where GraphQL becomes cool, is that everything is sent along as one, uh, one request, comes back as one request uh, response. Um, so one of the things that I would envision, and that's included in, in Apollo as well, and I thought in, in PWA Studio already as well, is that Apollo, instead of uh, making it use its own Redux store, you can just uh, wrap your own Redux store around it or connect it to it. So that in this Redux store, you can define actually all of the GraphQL. So this is actually where Pierre also starts to stick his head. Uh, but, but so I'm not a builder of such a platform, and you guys are. So I, I was simply responding to it as, well, yeah. I want to play with it. And uh, so basically your question should be answered, I simply want to have a procedure, create a component in this way, and then it's reusable. So and then it, it includes caching, and it includes a GraphQL query that is sent back to the framework where it's belonging to, and et cetera. So, awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have about a 15 minute break now before the final session up here, and then on to the general session after that. Thank and you I very much. still got stickers. <laughs>